because again, this is a country that doesn't uh, tick many of the boxes for nationalism. It doesn't have a sense of victimhood. It's very important for nationalism. Or it doesn't have a sense that we have to continue to conquer lands. You know, something that you had that was very strong, say, in Europe in the age of the second imperialism in the 19th century. You know, let us conquer colonies. I mean, Japanese have no desire to occupy any country, to set forth, establish colonies, gain territory. Uh, they don't have any particular interest in their military. Uh, so it seems what you're arguing is there's mm -hmm. not really a continuity between mm -hmm. the nationalism of World War II, in which mm -hmm. you certainly did have mm -hmm. an imperialist outreach for conquering foreign lands, mm -hmm. and today's version of nationalism, mm -hmm. which you see as being much mm -hmm. more benign. I mean, my view of this is that nationalism is like a, a bass note in music. To, there's an underlying foundation mm -hmm. there, but you mm -hmm. don't have it in quite such a vivid way. It doesn't mean that it's not there. It's no, just... It's Hidden out of sight. Yeah, it's, it's not strong in the sense, I mean, you see it, for example, you know, not that many Japanese are interested in joining the armed forces. Uh, if you compare, same thing, if you compare to the U.S., there's much higher rates of nationalism. I don't, I'm not talking about the Trump xenophobia stuff, talking about just nationalism, patriotism. You know, in the U.S., if you and I were 20-year-olds and wanted to go into politics, one thing we would probably consider is joining the military. 